Okay, so I'm Deborah Rudolph. I'm one of the programmers here at Tribeca, um, and I'd like to welcome back Director Michael Thielen. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I think you want to bring up some people from the film, right? Yeah, everybody. Cast, <laughs> crew, if you're here, everybody. Please come up. Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> Writer, producers. Michael, a question. So, you're working with these amazing young people. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but this is a pretty scary, serious movie. So, tell me what that was like in the negotiation of how do I work with kids and do this serious subject? How, how, how did you manage that? Um, I mean, the biggest thing was casting the right kids, so we got really lucky. Um, and then just really just letting them do what comes naturally to them, uh, which is acting and being themselves. And we just didn't really discuss a lot of the things in the film that they weren't part of. Um, and everything else, they just killed it. I mean, it was, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to ask you, you have a, a huge background in commercial, um, production and this is your first feature yeah so tell us a little bit about what that was like for you uh, it wasn't as, as different as I thought it'd be it was just it's just longer it's like a marathon and so you just you got to put blinders on and there's so many things coming at you and as long as you get through those what do we have 21 22 days it doesn't matter and we got through it no reshoots I mean everything you see up there um, that was that was it. I mean, we didn't we didn't go back try to change anything. The kids were amazing. Sarah, Sarah's amazing. Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, that was the only real difference cuz the producers, you know, they did a great job. It's just it's very difficult um, to last that long, but we did and with the kids and and we and there it is. And, and you just finished it what, 2 weeks ago or something? Easter, yeah. <laughs> So we're working on the holiday, but it was worth it. I hope. I hope. Um, so I'm going to open it up to the audience because I'm sure you have a lot of questions, um, and I'll repeat the questions so everyone can hear. We can hear questions. Somewhere? <laughs> Anybody? Okay, right here. Where the ideas came for the script? Okay, the question is where is the where did the idea come from um, for the script? Okay. Uh, the idea came from. Uh, Rich here, the writer. Uh, he and I were working on a couple projects together, and he's, he just happened to show me this um, short that he wrote, and just the idea of someone showing up to your house that may not be who they say they are. It was just, I freaked out. And I was like, let's just do this, this, and this. And he's like, hold on, hold on. And it was like, you know, it tends to go a little fast. And so we worked together to really kind of beat everything out and make really solid treatment. And he went back into God knows where he, where he goes. And he just he wrote it all out. And, and uh, so it all originated from this, this one idea, this really great, you know, short. And we extrapolated onto that. And here you go. Other questions? Questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Did you have a difficult time getting funding due to the serious nature of the film? Um, no. <laughs> I think we, we have great EPs that saw through all that. And I think they met with Rich and I, and, and Andrew Corkin did a really amazing job. <laughs> Andrew's got a great past. IMD Venom has just he's done so many great things. So bringing him on board, uh, along with Rich and myself, I think we just pitched it to the EPs and let them know, like, we're going to take this very seriously, and nothing campy. I hope it didn't seem very campy. It felt very real. 
and that's where the horror is. Um, it's not you know a slasher, blood everywhere kind of film as you guys saw. So that approach, the piece kind of they left on it, and they support us the whole way. That was great. Yes, Mike. Okay. Have you ever been to Buffalo? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from Chicago, Rich is from Buffalo, and I know plenty of people that still live like this, which is, you know, normal, really. It's probably 60%, who knows? It's all, you know, the middle America. So we have all this technology, but we don't always choose to use it. And um, I think it's reflected in the film. Because I didn't want, you know, they asked me, do you want a flat screen? And it's like, no, I know plenty of people that that's not important to them. And it's clear, you know, the family is the most important thing here. So it took some time. I mean, it's a slow burn kind of film at the beginning, I get it. But it's because the, the, these, the family members really care for each other. And that's what I wanted to get across. So if anything happened to this little guy, or these two, you know, you actually cared versus like, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> so, and the parents did amazing. I mean, you gotta give it up for them. They didn't have a ton of time and a ton of prep time, but they came in and they just nailed it. So, it's a good question, though. Yeah. In the back. So, uh, yeah, I want to commend everybody on the performance of the paper. fantastic. And uh, we can talk a little bit about your casting process and how long it took to find everybody, because it was such great chemistry. And I can only to you. What was that like? So, what was the casting process like? Uh, casting was it was done really well by our casting directors, but uh, believe it or not, you know, um, CJ and Josh, they were pretty much 48 hours before we started filming. They flew out because we had some issues with um, the old cast, and um, so what you see up there is really raw, and it's more or less shot the rehearsals because we had no time. So I did all this prep on how do you do with kids and. They get to freak out with this, you know, with everything, and it just all of a sudden it just came together, and you just again you just got to put your blinders on and just move forward. And we were blessed. CJ came to the uh, the table read, and she killed it. And she didn't even, you know, wasn't even necessarily, you know, supposed to play the part. And then once it opened up, there was no one else I could see. And then I met Josh, and Josh just got that charisma. You just look at him. And you just want to keep looking at him. You know? Sometimes you want to smack him, but you know what? You really want to look at him as you're doing it. So we just, we got, we got what? We, we got lucky. I got one follow-up. Was this the first time the kids have seen the film? This is the first time everybody's seen it. Yeah. Yeah, so let's ask the kids. Talk about seeing it and also your experience making the film. My heart has still gone, it's not back to normal yet. Um, but I mean, the casting process really, just kind of coming back to the casting process, the casting process was insane, because I'm based out of LA. I think I'm one of very few other than Sarah. Um, so they called me, I did a Skype interview with Michael, and I flew in, had some chicken wings, because that's important here in Buffalo, right? And uh, we got to shooting the next day, so. It was intense, uh, and it was a really exciting 22 days, and it was a lot of fun, too. Because I had a lot of fun. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, seeing it for the first time, it was really scary, but, I mean, seeing it being put together, I guess, made it less scary than it would have been. Yeah, Josh would say. And CJ too, um, they knew enough 
But it wasn't something we concentrated on because we really, again, blinders, what scene are we doing today? And that's all you can think about. And uh, that's all I wanted them to really think about. Obviously, I had to think about other things, but you know, the grind of any kind of production um, doesn't allow to really get into talking about other things that you're not shooting that particular day. And the really tough scenes, I mean, I think they were handled with care. And why don't you talk about it? Um, I just, I, I know. Um, Wait, uh, what was the question? <laughs> oh, yeah, so, well, I, I know, I read the script. I, I was like, Michael, you got to give me the script. I, I don't do this if I don't get the script. I like, I like to know what I'm acting. I, I want to know what it's going to kind of, in a way, be like. Um, and there were certain parts that I'm a little bogged out that got cut out. Um, <laughs> namely, namely, after I throw up into the, um, into the plant, I was supposed to say, sorry, Bob. Because uh, the plant's name was Bob, and Bob Bob just got cut straight out. I was, I'm a little, I'm a little, not okay, Michael. <laughs> well, when I first started, this is my really first movie. Really, I did two, and this is my first one. Really. script at the table read, so it didn't come as much as a, as a surprise, but I was really freaked out by what, by what we did with it. <laughs> freaked out in a good way or bad? In a good way. Uh, all the way back? Uh, I was just wondering for the writer, did you draw anything on a, like, either like a real life article that you read or something you knew that you saw about to be It's actually biographical. Um, <laughs> we, we did do a lot of research into some true, very sad stories about nannies gone bad and kidnappings and um, people who stole the lives away from others. And it, it really came from the idea that we put our lives in the hands of complete strangers every single day, and we don't give a second thought. I mean, the cab drivers, the cooks in the restaurant, these people could destroy your life with a wrench of the wheel or sprinkling something in the food and you don't consider it. And uh, it also touches on modern, I guess, sharing culture as well, the way we put ourselves out there so much online and uh, inviting people in our homes in Airbnb or getting someone else's car in Uber. Um, you never know whose car that is, you don't know who's coming in your house. And that idea scared me and uh, that's more where it came from than um, something that happened to me. I thought that was one of the best things. Yeah, that's, that, was, that was the scary part that inspired it. Yeah, so your question is to Sarah just about how you approach that character and how you felt about playing someone like that. The question is for Sarah and how did she feel about playing the character and how did she approach it? It's me. <laughs> that's just who I am in real life. <laughs> Absolute psychopath. Um, do you know what, it was the, it was talking to Michael on Skype for the first time about modern day society and how we and how we deal with things and exactly what Rich said. Um, to get into that mind frame, I know this sounds strange, but Buffalo really helped. There wasn't a lot to do. <laughs> I was in that room doing homework every night. She is her moral compass is way off. And it was very exciting to play that person, to play someone whose set of rules is sort of different to my own. Um, these kids are great, though, because you could scare the crap out of them and they're still going to act with you. <laughs> but I loved it. This role was terrifyingly brilliant. I hope none of you want to be my friends. Well, one thing I want to follow up is, uh, you know, meeting with Sarah, she, I mean, it was heads and tails beyond any other actress, which we won't mention names, and they were really good actresses, but she totally got what... I wanted to do on this, which is not make her crazy. And she's not, I don't think she's the bad person. She does bad things, but she got it. She got that you can't just all of a sudden play crazy and just have no like reason for what you're doing. So, you know, there's dark places in Sarah somewhere that she's able to <laughs> gather to, to really do that. I mean, we called her one take Sarah because she really nailed most of these in one or two takes. 
And uh, I think that comes with a lot of preparation and taking it very seriously instead of just being like, oh, she's crazy. You, you don't know how many people told me, well, yeah, she's crazy. And I was like, well, you know, we need to go deeper to make a better movie. And so the first thing out of Sarah's mouth was that, you know, she's not crazy. She just, she does bad things and she's got a really weird moral compass. So um, I was just really proud of Sarah on this. I think she did a great job.